Let me just get started on what the impact has been on sales for restaurant businesses during the pandemic and what your estimates are for the rest of the year now that we're seeing slow reopenings. Great. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here with you. Yes, it's been a very rough start to the uh, the year with the pandemic. So through June, we, we already know there's been about $145 billion impact uh, and revenue loss to the industry. And on top of that, uh, roughly 8 million jobs were lost during the, the height of the pandemic as well. Uh, that's about half of the total jobs in the industry. What we're projecting at this point is that that number uh, could end up around $240 billion uh, for the year. And that's given some of the estimates that we have today with the openings that have happened already. And Tom, negotiations continue on Capitol Hill on the next round of stimulus measures, and we really have not seen uh, any sort of consensus. We had the Senate bill, the House bill that are two separate things. How much relief have you gotten from the measures put forth so far, and what are you expecting to see in the next round? Well, as you probably know, with the original PPP program, there were some challenges for restaurants, but the, the industry came together with government and brought together the Flexibility Act, which helped greatly. It extended the time frame. It created some additional opportunities for restaurants to participate. Having said that, that was just the first, uh, you know, the first step in the process. And we've asked for a lot more, not, not so much because we're trying to help this industry make money. We're actually trying to help it survive. So what's out there right now is we've asked, there's a dedicated bill that you referenced in the Senate uh, Restaurants Recovery Act, which is focused on $120 billion package for the industry. But in addition, we're very focused on this second round of PPP. And while there's some good parts of the PPP and we're excited about what that could be, there are some challenges with it as well. And so we've been asking for uh, the Senate to revisit the, the uh, gross receipts limit or the threshold for that. Today, it's at 50%. And to put that in perspective, for this industry, about 55% of restaurants wouldn't even uh, be able to qualify if it kept at that rate. This is a low margin industry, about 95 cents of every dollar go back into the economy, whether that's paying wages for employees, paying for food, or things like taxes and rent. So very important that we continue to see progress against the current PP the uh, program, and we're hopeful that between either the specific funding for the industry or the new PPP round, that will be helpful for the industry. Tom, I was looking at a, a new set of data out of New York City suggesting that a third of the small businesses in that city may be closed forever, uh, not to return post-pandemic. What are the numbers that you're looking at in terms of the downsized view of the industry after all of this blows over? Well, we've already seen a pretty significant impact, uh, probably between 25 and 30,000 restaurants we believe are closed permanently. Uh, we believe over time it could be much higher than that, but I think at this point we need to get through this next round, see what happens. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, the, the season has been, uh, will we'll play big into that. The ability for restaurants to operate delivery and takeout as well as outdoor dining has been uh, a boost during the summer time frame. But uh, what happens going forward will be key to the uh, long-term results. How much permanent change do you see the way that uh, the F&B industry will have to, to, to alter the way that they do business? Because one of the concerns is that with you know, a delayed vaccine or a vaccine that's only seasonal or only partially effective, we are looking at perhaps a new reality where restaurants will have to take into account social distancing and these new hygiene requirements on a more permanent basis. Well, the great thing about this industry is this is a, an industry that's very entrepreneurial from the from the get-go. This is an or industry that is always looking to adapt and be flexible, and they've demonstrated that throughout this entire pandemic, whether that was the increased takeout and delivery or looking at new ways of driving revenue. Think about things like cocktails to go uh, or leveraging technology to do contactless uh, menus, et cetera. I think going forward, we'll certainly see continued innovation driving change in the industry. Uh, but this industry will flex and find ways to be successful, assuming we can get through this, this important time frame. As you, are, as you mentioned, I think the change in the climate over the next couple of months will have a big impact. We've had great support from many local municipalities, great examples of industry and government working together to create more outdoor dining. But we need to get the inside of these restaurants open. We need to increase the capacity uh, right now. We need to make sure that clearly guests feel safe going into this environment. And that's an area where this industry's got a great history of 
doing a lot of things around food safety and certainly cleanliness to get, help those guests feel comfortable uh, going in and dining uh, comfortably. Yeah, please expand on those measures that the association is trying to take with these restaurants when it comes to safety, because we have seen the resurgence in other parts of the world, especially in Asia, really stemming from a lot of times from these restaurants being crowded, from bars, from people just socializing in that environment. Well, as you probably know, this is an industry that has a long history of food safety, and, and uh, we've been fairly regulated from that perspective. We work closely with the FDA and the CDC uh, to create reopening guidelines. And those reopening guidelines are very specific, and they talk about increased sanitation, certainly social distancing, as well as the utilization of PPE, specifically masks uh, in the restaurants. So that's just for the restaurant operators themselves to create that safe environment. We're asking guests to do the same thing and make sure that guests are equally as thoughtful about as they approach restaurants, as they socialize in those places, follow those same standards and guidelines to ensure that safe uh, environment. We're, when we see those things in place, we're seeing strong results. We're seeing, uh, you know, we're not seeing increased activity from the virus when people are following those guidelines. Surely there have been some bad actors from time to time, but broadly speaking, this industry has been very, very supportive here and doing great, a great job following the guidelines.